Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone, to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast, where we interview leaders on how they grow their people, themselves, and their revenue. And before we get started today, we've got a sweet guest today. Well, that's a really terrible pun. You'll get it in a moment. I want to share uh, some good news. We've got a new app coming out. It's called Mindset Boosters. And what it's designed to do is to give you applied neuroscience in the palm of your hand. So if you're a salesperson and today you're not feeling the magic to make the calls, you go to Fearless Calling and it uses applied neuroscience to show you how to become unstoppable. So in six minutes, you'll pick up the phone and you'll be a beast. It's designed to give you the help you need no matter what's going on, when you need it. Today, I have the privilege of having Ben Sweet on the show. In 2021, he was designated featured agent in Top Agent Magazine. Ben, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Omar. I appreciate it. So brilliant. How long have you been in the industry? Uh, you know what? I've got one more week and then it'll be 20 years. Wow. That's pretty, uh, then you can get your pension. You're all set. That's right. (laughs) My realtor pension. Yeah. (laughs) So what's amazing is this is such a, you eat what you kill and you get better as you go. Going back 20 years, when you first came into the industry, what did you think it would be like? And what did the reality turn out to be? Oh, wow. That's a, so when I started out, I, I really didn't have a ton of confidence, uh, didn't really have the self-esteem either. Uh, and so like many people who are committed to doing anything, I, I kind of got put through the meat grinder for a period of about three years and then finally woke up one morning and I was like, no, I can, I can do this. Like I can, I can make this happen. Uh, but it did, it really took me that long. Uh, sh- so short answer would be, uh, um, it's, it was much harder starting than I thought it was going to be. Uh, right. but I'm glad that it was as hard as it was because it turned me into the person that I am today. Brilliant. So let's go back to that thing. Like you kind of mentioned that, you know, one morning I woke up and I said, okay, I got this. What do you think happened that allowed you to get that different uh, point of view, that different mindset? What was the transformation and what do you think caused it? So great question. And, and it's funny, I spend a lot of my time, energy and effort throughout the day, you know, trying to unlock bigger parts of my brain, bigger parts of my mind and help other people to do the same thing on my team, specifically because everything ultimately about achieving something is about having some sort of a personal shift or some sort of an opening within yourself so that you can really kind of grasp what it is and become the person you need to become to achieve the thing that you say you want. So, uh, you know, had I gone through that exact same process now, I probably could have done it in a month instead of three years. Um, and, And the reason I know that's true is because of the current trajectory that our business, my team, myself, what we've been on recently. So I I firmly believe that really what's happened was, is that it was just a a, a combination of cumulative changes over a three-year time frame uh, where my mind basically was just like, you know, you got this, like, it's okay. Like you, you have the proof now you've, you've done it. You've, you've seen it. You've, you know, jumped through the hoops you need to jump through to get to the place where you now have the full realization that, you know, you're capable um, and it's unfortunate it did take three, three years. Uh, but I think for most people, like I started when I was 27, which I right. you know nowadays there's lots of people under the age of 25 that are realtors. Uh, but when I started 27 was extremely young. What's interesting is this is I suspect that it took you three years to kind of get to that point, but maybe two months before that or three months before that you were already that different person. It just took you a little while to have that self-awareness to go, well, wait a minute. So you seem to be a very self-aware person right now. How do you maintain that? Or how do you make sure you don't get distracted with the distractions in life? And some of them are wonderful. you got two dogs. We noticed them earlier in the shot. So (laughs) how do you stay self-aware so you know when when shit's going on? Uh, Well, I have two dogs, two stepdaughters, uh, a lovely wife. She also has a business. um, And we have, you know, 
number of properties and we travel a fair bit and we do lots of different things. So a very full life for sure. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit more scope there. Nice. I know it's just a single guy with a couple of dogs yeah. <laughs> working 24 you know? seven. Yeah. What's your secret to success? Oh, I work, you know, 72 hours a day is, is my secret, you know, so it's not, but, um, so, uh, self-awareness, uh, thanks for noticing, I guess. Um, but the reality is, is that, um, yeah, I get, I get wrapped up and lost all the time. Um, but, I, uh, I, I do, I have a belief change process that I do all day, every day. So anytime I catch myself getting lost or bothered or frustrated or upset or pissed off, or I get a, a result or some sort of an outcome, or I find myself in a circumstance uh, that I'm not happy with, I just sit back and go, well, how and why did I create that? Why am I in this circumstance? What, did, how did I, how was I a participant in bringing this about? And yeah. So I'll give you a perfect example. This morning I received a phone call. It came through our call center and I looked at it and I could tell it was a sales call. It was a guy from American Express and it just said, Hey, you know, call this number. And I knew exactly what was going to happen. I was going to call the number and they're like, hi, why are you calling us? Like, I didn't call. You called me and oh, blah, 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 we're so sorry. And I, it was not supposed to go that way. And that's exactly what happened. So part of it was maybe I created the circumstance, but that's not the important thing. The important thing was, is that you know, I'm on the phone with the guy for 15 minutes. I told him five minutes before, I was like, I have to wrap this up. I've got some things I need to take care of. Right. And he keeps talking and talking and talking. And finally, my frustration level goes up and and then we end the call. And then at the end, I was sitting there and I'm like, look at, look at me all frustrated. Like, why am I so frustrated right now? Why did this ruffle my feathers? Why did this bother me? Um, I've been on hundreds of sales calls and, uh, you know, on as a recipient. And, I, you know, why did it bother me so much? So I sat there with it for a moment and I was like, I felt like he hijacked my time uh, and I, and I gave it to him. And for me, that really bothers me because, and then all of a sudden I realized that I'm hyper protective of my time. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, Mar, when you reached out, I was like, who's this guy? What does he want? Cause I get lots of people reaching out regularly. And again, it's not an ego statement for me. It's legitimately just the reality of that I currently live in. And so I'm, I'm really protective of my time, especially with sales calls. Um, so that's why I got frustrated was that I was a willing participant and I kept giving it to him. So I was frustrated with myself for letting myself down. So I, I got upset by that. So what I realized was, is I had to take a bit of a breather and, uh, and, and let go of my selfishness around my own time. So yeah. that's a process I'm working on today. Anyway. Interesting. So two things there. Number one, the way you described it is I knew what was going to happen. Like I willingly went into this mugging. And the second thing you said was, you know, uh, how did I create this event? And I think for some people, when they're going through their trauma or their issue, it's like, Ben, what the hell are you talking about that I created this? And I'm a firm believer in this concept of useful lies. Even if what Ben said was a lie that, so, you know, what did I do to create this? Even if that was a lie, it's a damn useful lie because it lets you ask yourself, how did I get here? What's going on? Why did I have this reaction? If you're always looking at, they did it. They're the faults. You never get to see what's happening here. And what's happening here has a massive impact on what you experience out there. Yeah, I agree. I, I, if I could add a little bit more to that, one sure, of the big things of that I tell my team is I'm like, you have to accept radical responsibility for all occurrences. And, and some people look and they go, but that means that I'm always to blame. And it's like, no, it doesn't mean that. That that's the blame lens. Like only if you're looking through the blame lens are you always to blame. But like there's a better lens to look, there's many better lenses to look through. And one of them is the responsibility lens. So I always say, look, if you accept full responsibility for all of the things that are occurring in your life because you know, you're the common denominator, right? Like it's you and every other circumstance in your life. So if you accept full responsibility for all of that, then you then you have the ability to create real change because you accept full responsibility because you you now realize that you have more control and more influence over the circumstances in your life than you more than you ever thought possible. Absolutely. And I think uh, just useful tools, getting through life. Life is not at one level is super complicated. And when you get through all the complication, like there's this quote from Einstein that goes, you know, I don't care for simplicity, but simplicity on the other side of complexity is a beautiful thing. And when you get to the, that's what you're describing is the other side of it. It's like, okay, don't look at the chaos. Uh, you know, how am I, I'm taking responsibility. It just gives you clarity. So speaking of clarity, you have probably, how many agents do you lead right now? 
Uh, we are eight right now. We've got another one coming on right away. And I just met another one a couple of days ago. Uh, I'll be honest with you. It's, it is just, it's blowing up right now. It's crazy. Um, I've got nice. anywhere from one to four people per month reaching out to us completely organically. Um, and it's just, it's just happening. It's just unfolding. Um, and the crazy part was, is maybe five years ago, I, for the life of me, could not get agents to join me. I was right. actively pursuing people. I was trying to do all these different things and I could never get anyone. It was crazy, really difficult. Um, we made a number of different changes and then things certainly got much easier. So, so don't name names in the agents, but a particular agent that you were coaching, a particular issue that they had that you realized that, holy crap, I've got this too. I'm coaching that person to get better there, but I'm suffering from the same ailment. Have you had one of those experiences where as you're teaching someone, you realize, huh, I think I've got the same issue. Uh, have you had that happen before? Uh, yeah. Every time I coach somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My windows are dirty too, you know, like, and, but the cool thing about it is, is that like, I kind of like finding those little things because it, it means I now have the opportunity to grow and experience a bigger existence of life, a bigger reality, if you will, by just kind of cleaning those windows. And, uh, so yeah, every single time I coach somebody for sure. And and I coach a couple people a week and uh, just like my team members for the most part, let's say on average I do. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a regular thing. It's just a matter of at what level am I finding that my windows are dirty? Yeah. So as you get uh, more and more uh, self-aware and you get stronger as a human being and more authentic, those stuck points become more and more subtle. And sometimes sure. you need that other person to let you see it in yourself. And I think one of the reasons we have the 8 billion people in the world is it's hard to see who we are, but we can see who we are in other people quite easily. And yeah. uh, so when you're looking at someone who's amazing and wonderful and you admire them and you go, I admire that attribute, that's a clue to who you are. And then when you think about that dirt bag, who is a complete idiot, and you think about what's the thing they've got that I hate, then you should be looking at a mirror going, You've got either a molecule of that or a lot more of it. And so, yeah, me too. It's like when I discover those shortcomings in me, it's a happy day because I found another one. And I think that's my wish for other human beings is everything in the entire world that comes like this chapstick thingy, this is how you open it, is the instruction manual. It actually says that and how you make the thing come out. So the simplest thing in the world, you get an owner's manual. The most important thing in the world, this your mindset doesn't come with one. And if we could teach people how to take charge of their mindset, then they would be able to go, oh, found a stuck point. This afternoon, I'm going to get rid of it. Because if we each become who we were always meant to be, we give permission to the people around us to go on the same journey. Yeah, that's really good. Because a lot of people just feel stuck and there's no hope. And so that's my mission. Make the world a happier place by teaching people how to take charge of this. Yeah. Well, that's a very uh, valiant mission for sure. And uh, obviously, you know, with the success you've had so far with your podcast, uh, you're creating some ripples and waves in good ways. So that's good. Brilliant. So as you move on and you're growing from the team you have right now, as you grow, oftentimes it's hard to maintain the culture and the connection. So you have to do it purposefully. So how are, are you consciously ensuring that the culture, the vibe of the team stays true? Oh, that's a good one. So our, our team has almost doubled in just the past few months. Um, and our transactions have like same thing, like we've almost tripled in, in sales. Uh, and so I, honestly, I mean, we go for beers. You know, like we go out for wings and beers and uh, we have semi-regular office meet. I say office nice. meetings, but really like we just get together and talk. Um, and we have, uh, you know, we've got, I'm sure most people do this these days, but I mean, we have, uh, you know, WhatsApp groups uh, where we're nice. chatting about different things and everybody's pretty fun and light and light. Like we make, we definitely have some, you know, decent off color humor there, I would say. And, uh, you know, we have, have lots of fun, you know, as much as possible, as much as we can. And it's funny. We're actually, even last night, someone's like, should we take a team trip somewhere? And I was like, that's a great idea. Like, why don't we 
let's do something. So we're even talking about the possibility of doing something like that, uh, which we'll probably do with our, our, our brokerage meeting. Uh, we've got one coming up uh, in October uh, in San Antonio, nice. Texas. It's the, the real event. So we're pretty excited and we'll probably end up doing that. But so short answer is how do I, how do we maintain that? Well, I mean, honestly, like uh, we're, I, we're constantly just doing our best to unfold in the best possible ways and be really good human beings and serve our people. And um, I think that the big part of the big part, the way that we do that is by um, serving each other in successful ways. So in other words, just ensuring that we're helping everybody else on our team become more successful. Uh, and then we're all becoming more successful as a result. Um, we don't have any specific type of team building or different things like that. I definitely have lots of great things I'm looking forward to doing. Um, but as far as the whole idea of culture goes, um, I'm playing catch up. You know, that's the short answer. Nice. I'm just learning as I go. Yeah. And certainly what you're doing right now is a good way to maintain it and do it. It's just like, hey, we care for each other. We have events where we're connecting and we can talk outside of the office. All that social connection adds value to the team. And is that glue that keeps them together because, you know, challenging times are coming. And what keeps a team together is those bonds that were made earlier on. That just becomes a way of supporting each other, loving each other and growing together. Right. Yep. I'll buy that for sure. Yep. So what's your biggest challenge coming up? Like what's the next phase for you in order to be a better leader? What are you identifying as I need to get better at X or Y or I need to let go of A or B? Like uh, what are you thinking right now or are you thinking that? Hmm. So w one of the biggest challenges I'm chewing on right now, or I should say working through is, uh, is truly stopping production. Um, so I've been a, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I was, I was never like a hundred transactions per year type of real estate agent. I was always more along the lines of who can I get to help me leverage, uh, you know, and, 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 and grow an organization that way versus me being, you know, the, the robot realtor, no offense to anyone right. that does that kind of level of production, but I, I personally find it's, it's really difficult to maintain balance and health and have good relationships and being a family person and actually enjoy your life if you're closing 100 transactions to yourself. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. I'm happy to be wrong there too. Anyway, short answer is that the biggest thing I'm working on right now is uh, as April 1st, so 21 days ago, uh, was when I, I, I'm no longer taking on any new clients. So I probably have maybe three or four clients, maybe five clients left to kind of work through uh, over the next little bit. But one of the things I feel like I'm just coming to the tail end of is being able to say to people, I'm not doing it anymore. I know I've, you, you've been, I've been your agent for 20 years, but I'm no longer, you know, doing real estate. And so it was the struggle of handing business over. That was my long-term clients yes. uh, over to my team was, was really, really very challenging initially. And I would imagine that probably a good solid 90% of team leads go through that same kind of thing. Uh, but the truth is, is that I am really my best when my focus is being a team lead and finding new ways to generate business, um, systematize, systematize the business, um, working with our admin, uh, and really just kind of helping to elevate the entire team and then focusing also on, uh, uh, you know, agent attraction recruitment and, uh, focusing on just kind of making it better. So what are my big focuses right now? Well, you know, I, I guess I, I need to put some limits around some things. Uh, like, I don't know how big I want our team to grow. Uh, right. I don't know if I want it to just cap out at 10 or 15 agents, or if we're going to go to 20, uh, but it just kind of keeps happening. So I'm just kind of going with it. I want to make sure that the agents that were here before it was a 10, 15, 20 person organization, that they still feel solid and comfortable in our organization as well. So is that a challenge? Well, no, it's a, but it's definitely uh, an awareness of mine. It's a it's a, I don't want to call it a concern, but it's something I'm, I'm doing my best to uh, make sure I'm holding dearly because I care about my agents, like I care about my family and it's important to me that they feel really well taken care of uh, and that they are in an environment where they can truly get to whatever level of success uh, they want to get to uh, and then beyond if, if that's, you know, their next level. So, so uh, those kinds of things. I'm also regularly struggling with some technology issues. Uh, we're always kind of working and upgrading, trying to find different ways to make things better and better and better. Uh, and then, of course, I, I like many real estate agents who, like I literally started as the single agent that needed to control every single aspect of my business. Right. And then brought on a VA and then, oh, you can have, uh, here's a couple hours a week of, uh, but let me watch everything you do. And then, and then I just kind of over time grew into 
you know, being having, a, you know, a medium sized team and looking forward to growing further. So challenges. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's always more challenges. How can we, how can we get our lead costs down? How can we convert more business? How can we have better technology? How can I control our costs better? How can I help my agents to become more productive? Probably the same things I assume that most other teams focus on as well. But Absolutely. So here's just uh, something to think about in terms of just leaders in companies, yes. uh, like the CEO kind of position. There's three main things that uh, that CEO position should be doing. One is a kick-ass, amazing vision of where we want this company to go. And it should be compelling yes. enough that people go, I want to come on that journey. Uh, yes. Two is the culture. How do you get people to put the team ahead of their individual selfish interests? How do you get a team where people are willing to put up their hand when they got a problem and don't think I'm going to look weak, but can rely on the team? So that culture piece. And the third piece is long-term shareholder value for the thing that we're building. And real estate is slightly different, but pretty much, you know, if you're doing those high level things, you're doing your job right. And until you get to that position, because recruiting is really important. And part of that is you sharing your vision with people. This is what we're looking to build. This is the vibe on our team. And either this is right for you or not, but uh, recruiting correctly really is important because you can get the wrong person coming in if you're not on top of it enough. And uh, so brilliant. So, so Ben, let me ask you this. I think fundamentally, happiness is a, a really important element of life. Mm -hmm. And so, Ben, what makes you happy? Hmm. Uh, so I don't believe that there's anything that makes me happy. Uh, I believe that happiness is, a, uh, is not uh, based on conditions, so it's not a conditional thing. Uh, it's like real true love for your kids, for your dog for your wife for your family um you know it, it's true love is not conditional right it is unconditional and true. i believe happiness i believe happiness is the same uh in which case things don't need to be right for you to still feel happy i, I can still have massive challenges in various areas of my life and still mm -hmm. feel joy and contentment and happiness as i go through my day uh, moment to moment. So short answer is, um, Umar, is that I don't have anything that makes me happy. I do have some things that I love to do where I feel in, in a more enlightened or not enlightened, but a more enlivened state, a more joyful state. Like I love sports. I love doing sports, like skiing, mountain biking, climbing. Like we, when I do that, and especially when I do it with my family, like it's phenomenal. Like it's such, so uplifting to me. But it's temporary, right? Like it's not, this is how I, you know, I, I don't need to constantly focus on filling the cup so that I can get to that place where I'm feeling happy. I, right. You could lock me in a room and I can be happy. Like you can take away everything and ultimately I can still have that happiness within myself because I, I firmly believe that happiness is, um, it's it's a, State of it's mind. an interior, it's an interior, uh, it, well, it, it's an experience um, it's a sense of awareness. It's a, it's a spiritual state, if you will, um, mm -hmm. that happens spontaneously, um, and that can come and go. Uh, but I also believe it can simply be brought about in a moment's notice by just simply allowing it to be there. Um, Brilliant. and I, you know, I, I, that, that would be my short answer. So I don't really have anything specific, but you know, there are some things I do that bring about greater feelings of happiness for sure. Yeah. Brilliant. What's one mind hack you'd like to share with our viewers, listeners that they could implement that would make them either better, stronger, faster, happier, sexier? <laughs> What's the one thing you'd like to share? Uh, okay. So I would, uh, so there's a couple pieces. I guess one of the first things uh, that I would love to share is that is the understanding uh, that you're way more powerful and you have way more control and influence uh, over the circumstances in your life than you have any concept of, right? One of my favorite quotes, I don't know who said it first, but I heard Jim Carrey say it. He's like, life happens for you, not to you. And so when you understand that it happens for you, then you do really have a bit of an understanding that you can kind of shift and change, you know? Uh, Tim Ferriss, one of the great things I heard him say was, he's like, life is way more, the experience of life is way more malleable than we currently believe it is. So when you understand that it is malleable, uh, it gives you the opportunity to shift and change certain things about your life to make it better. Uh, so that's the other thing. The other, the other key thing is, is that I have found that the sword that uh, is amazing at kind of lopping off negativity in your life and being able to 
really harness the creative ability that we all have uh, truly comes from belief change. So understanding that belief is the substrate for reality. For And when yeah. I say reality, I don't mean the reality. I mean the reality that you experience as a human being, like the way that you see and experience your world. The substrate for that uh, is belief. So if you believe, um, you know, any number of things, and it's never about one belief, it's always about a system of beliefs. Uh, but, you know, successful people are successful because they know, they know firmly that they can create success no matter what. But that knowingness comes from belief itself. Uh, it, it knowing you don't know first and believe second. You believe first and know second. Uh, that's that's ultimately the order of operations. So the one thing I'd love to leave people with is the understanding that they have way more power to create a perfect life or a beautiful life or whatever kind of life they want for themselves or whatever success you're looking for. You have the ability to create it way beyond any measure of what you currently believe to be true. And understanding that belief change is that key lever that can create massive change in your reality. So. Brilliant. That's thank what you I like for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, ben, thank you so much for being on the show. 26 minutes kind of zip by like that. Uh, yeah, enjoyed our sure conversation did. and I'm looking forward to our next. Me too. Thanks so much, Umar. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming and that is the fastest way to get better results. 